Most drawing styluses, like Apple Pencil, offer incredible pressure sensitivity for artists. Knowing how to adjust pressure settings can make your drawing experience a lot more enjoyable. Let's see how to do that. Before we head over to Procreate, I want to make a quick stop over my sketchbook to show you what I mean by pressure sensitivity. So here we are with a highlighter. So no matter how much pressure or how little pressure that I use, it still gives me relatively consistent lines in terms of the size of the line. That is because the tip of the brush is made of rigid felt. It's pretty hard. And here is another brush. It's made of much softer felt. So when I use lighter pressure, it gives me a finer line. And when I increase the pressure, you can see the line become thicker. When you use lighter pressure, it gives you a thinner line. And when you increase the pressure, it gives you thicker line. With that basic understanding of the mechanics, let's head over to Procreate again. So over here, I have a gouache brush from my own brush set. So when I vary my pressure on screen, you can see it behaves very similarly to the natural bristled brush that we have seen a minute ago. So how does that happen with a digital brush? I'm going to start over with a new brush. So we're at a similar starting point. So hit plus on your brush library and then hit done. So you have a generic brush. I want you to go over to the Apple Pencil. Under Apple Pencil, the first section is called Pressure. It gives us some different factors that we can manipulate by using pressure. And this is not the only pressure sliders that we have inside the Brush Studio. I want you to pay attention to the size first. So if we increase the percentage to the right, let me just clear this drawing pad real quick. And I'm going to vary pressure as I draw this squiggle. So lighter at the beginning and then heavier gradually. As you can see, the pressure does make a difference. Because this is a digital tool, so it does things that natural analog media may not be able to do. That happens when you slide the slider of the size all the way down to the negatives. It's going to give you the opposite. So lighter pressure gives you thicker lines, while heavier pressure gives you thinner lines. So this gives you a lot of opportunity to be creative in your digital illustration. Similarly, you can also tie in the opacity with pressure. Although personally, I don't find it super helpful just because it's not my style, but I do use the size a lot. Whenever I want the size of the brush tip to be responsive to the pressure, I would change this slider. So that's pressure regarding to size. And also, I want you to come over to taper. So there is a whole section under taper to help us to make the thick and thin transition more natural and graceful. So basically, if you can think of this graph as the tip of the brush, for example, this brush that we've seen a minute ago. So when we start out, it's going to be very sharp. As we use pressure down, it is going to produce a thicker line. So there is a graceful transition between the thick and thin. And similarly, when we lift our hand, it is going to transition from thick to thin. So this whole taper section is in charge of mimicking that dynamic. So initially, the head and the tail of the stroke is not linked. I like to have my linked because just a personal preference. The longer the distance between the beginning and the first um, node, the smoother the transition is going to be. So maybe start out somewhere like one third of the place 
and then change the size to maybe 50%. And then now when you draw your strokes, it's much, much more pressure responsive. And you can also add more dynamic to how much of um, opacity do you want to add in. The best way to learn any of these settings is to play with it. So make a really nice copy of any brush that you want to play with and then do maybe 20% to 10% increments and see how it's affecting your strokes. And then once you find a happy spot of any brush that you have modified, come over to about this brush and then write your name there and you can create a new reset point. So this one tells Procreate Brush Studio to remember all the settings under this brush. So whenever you make any new modification and you wanna revert back to the reset point, you can just hit reset brush. So there's pressure curve and taper. But before we wrap up this lesson, I wanna show you one more thing. So head over to Actions and then Pressure and Smoothing. Inside this uh, window, you can see there is an app pressure sensitivity. So if you observe in real life that some people have heavier hand when they draw, some people have a lighter hand, notice that if you haven't set anything here, let me just reset, this line is going to be straight diagonal. I have mine also always curved up a little bit. So what this one means is that when I use lighter pressure to lay down the stroke, it's still going to make a decent mark. So in that way, if I have it curved up like that, I don't leave scratches all over the place because I naturally have a heavier hand when I draw. So this gives me visual um, feedback. Even if I'm using a lighter hand, that reminds me not to draw too hard on my iPad. So if that is your case as well, you might want to curve up this pressure sensitivity. All right, that's it. I will see you in the next lesson.